Welcome to our lecture online. Here's our next example how to use the mesh analysis method to find the current inside the circuit. So the idea is to find the current right here in this mesh, the first mesh. Notice we already have the, the circuit set up. We have three meshes, therefore we have three currents inside the meshes. So what are we going to do is we're going to use the KVL method to add up all the voltage rises and drops around each of the three meshes. So using KVL, let's go to mesh number one, start at this corner right here. We're going to move around the circuit with the way the current is drawn I1. Of course, whenever we go across a component, we're going to have a voltage drop. So on the first component right here, we have a voltage drop. So it's minus eight times I1. Here we have a voltage drop again, so minus, but of course keep in mind there's a minus J2 because it's the reactance of the capacitor and that would also be I1. And then coming across here we have a voltage drop, so minus J4. And here we, we go with the current I1, so we have I1, but there we go against the current I2. And so we have to subtract I2, come all the way around and that adds up to zero. Now, of course, we want to combine all the currents. We have I1 here, here, and here. So for I1, we have a minus 8. A minus times a minus becomes a plus J2, and a minus J4 becomes a minus J2. So that would be 8 minus J2. Uh, and that would be times I1. And then we have one I2 right here. So we have a minus J4 times a minus. That becomes a plus j4 times i2 and let's see here and that then would add up to zero so here we have our first equation from mesh number one with just currents i1 and i2 all right let's do mesh two now so starting again we'll start at this corner right here we move all the way around so we have j4 so we drop a minus j4 and that would be with the current I2 and against the current I1. Then we come up here, we go across the resistor, so it's minus 6 times. We go with the current I2 and it looks like against the current I3. Like this. And then we go across the voltage supply from positive to negative, so it's minus 50 volts with a phase angle of 30 degrees, and all that adds up to zero. All right, now we want to work on that a little bit by combining uh, all the like currents. So we have one I1 term, so we have a positive J4 times I1, like this. We have an I2 here and an I2 there. So we have a minus 6 and a minus 4, so that's plus a minus 6 minus J4. That's times I2. And we have a minus times a minus, or a plus 6 times I3. And then we move that to the other side, that becomes a plus 50 with a phase angle of 30 degrees. Now also, let's write that out as the, in, the, um, in its component form. So 30, take the cosine of that, that's 0.866 times 50, that's 43.3. So this can be written as 43.3, and then plus, that would be 25, J25. So we can also write it like that, and so let's rewrite it here. So it looks complete, J4, I1, plus a minus 6, minus J4, I2, and then a plus 6, I3. And there's our second equation. Okay, now we need a third equation, mesh 3, but there we have a current source. So it's driving current in this direction, 10 amps, with a zero degrees phase angle, and it's in the opposite direction of I3. So for the third equation, the third equation, we can simply say that I3 equals a minus 10 with a phase angle of zero degrees, which is simply minus 10. Now notice we have three, we have three currents. We have an I3, an I1, and an I2. We can get rid of the I3 in here by substituting what we have in here. So let's do that. Let's take equation number two and substitute for the I3 what we know I3 to be equal to. All right, when we do that, we get the following. We get J4 I1 plus a minus six minus 
J4, I2, and have plus 6 times a minus 10. So plus 6 times a minus 10 instead of 6I3 equals 43.3 plus J25. Now notice we can take the minus 60 for the left side, move to the right side and add it to the real part of that. So we end up with J4I1 plus minus 6 minus J4 I2 is equal to 60 plus 43 or 103.3 plus J25. Okay, so now what we have here is we have this equation for mesh 2 instead of this equation, because this equation contains I3, so we'll get rid of that. So we don't, well, we don't get rid of it, we just don't consider it. So we're going to consider this equation right here, and this equation, we now have two equations and two unknowns, which we can put in the matrix format like this. So well, then we can write that we have J4 times, oh, let's start with equation number one. I'd like to do that instead, just typical format. So let's take equation number one. So we have minus eight minus J2 plus a J4. Over here we end up with a positive J4 and a minus six minus J4. And if we multiply the times the current two currents I1 and I2, that should then add up to the two terms on the right side of the equation. On the first here equation we have a zero. And on the second equation, we have 103.3 plus J25. And so now we have a nice matrix that we can solve using determinants. And of course, because we're kind of lacking board space, taking ahead, this is part one. We'll stop at this point. So now we have a nice equation that will allow us to find I1 and I2. Once we have I1 and I2, notice that the current we're looking for is in the opposite direction of I1. So once we find I1, we simply take the other direction of I1 to find I, and that should then solve the equation. But we need a little bit more board space, so we'll stop right here, and we'll continue on the next video by solving for I1 and I2 using this matrix format, using determinants. And that is how it's done.